The following program is a paid presentation. Wake up to the Word. Share an uplifting hour with grace and glory and Baltimore's faithful. Well, good morning, gang. As always, we're so grateful to be here with you today on this glorious Lord's Day. However, I need to make you aware of the fact that this Sunday will be a very special edition of Grace and Glory because we're going to be preempted somewhat for a very special station commitment. So don't be alarmed. You will get the word. You just won't get an entire show, but everything will return to normal right after that. Okay? So with that being said, I hope you enjoy the word and enjoy this very special edition of Grace and Glory. Welcome to the television broadcast ministry of Southern Baptist Church. And now a word from our pastor, Dr. Dante L. Hickman, Sr. By the time of our text, the apostle Paul was engaging the church in Rome about living in the spirit over the flesh. He understood the Roman culture of secularism, sports, and sexual promiscuity, and some of the ways in which they conflicted with living a moral and ethical Christian life. Subsequently, Paul was trying to help the Christians in Rome to live their faith beyond their flesh. But he empathized with them and their difficulty with being saved and still sinning. And every child of God has had this age-old struggle with being saved and still sinning. All of us from time to time do things that please us, but displeases God. And Paul goes even further to say that when he wanted to do good, he didn't. And when he didn't want to do bad, he did. And many of us who have been blessed by the grace and mercy of God to make it to this year have made determinations and resolutions that we're going to do some things differently than we did last year. Resolved, I'm going to lose weight. Resolved, I'm letting go of that dead-end job. Resolved, I'm breaking up with that toxic girlfriend or boyfriend. Resolved, I'm going to stop living beyond my means. Resolved, I'm going to stop smoking, drinking, gambling, gossiping, and sleeping with everybody on my job, at my school, and in my church. Look straight ahead. And all of those, my dear brothers and sisters, are great resolutions, but the only problem is that they're the same resolutions you had last year. Ask your neighbor right quick, has your list changed or is it still the same? Subsequently, what the Apostle Paul said in his letter to the church in Rome still applies to the church everywhere today. And that is that we can't manifest God's best when we are still stuck in our flesh. And we can't be spirit-filled and sinful at the same time. And Paul makes it clear that it's not merely a problem in the pew, but it's also a problem in the pulpit. Paul was a chief apostle. Paul was a bishop in the Lord's church. Paul was a Christian witness, and yet he struggled daily with his flesh. And he clarifies that all of us have more than a weight problem. We have more than a money problem. We have more than a sex problem. We have more than a health problem. We have more than a marriage and a family problem. We have more than a substance abuse and self-esteem problem. We all have a sin problem that stems from the nature and needs of our flesh. And Paul, my dear brothers and sisters, was very transparent about his personal problem with sin. And what Paul concluded was that sin was good to him, but it was not good for him. And if you sitting up in here holier than thou, talking about I don't like sin, the devil is a lie, and so are you. I ain't never met nobody slipping in the sin. We walked in it, we jumped in it, we flew to it because it was good to us, but it was not good for us. Hold on now. Sin was not good for him, Paul says, in that it stripped him of his self-comprehension. 
Paul didn't know himself. In verse 15, he says, for what I'm doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that's what I end up doing. Anybody here got that problem where you do things you shouldn't and you don't do things that you should? And that's why we say blame it on the goose, got you feeling loose. Blame it on the throne, got you in the zone. Blame it on the vodka, blame it on the henny. Blame it on the blue tap, got you feeling dizzy. Blame it on the I, 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 I. I feel you, I feel you, I really do. And Paul does too, <laughs> because what is amazing to read in this text is that as intelligent as Paul was, that he was able to admit to his ignorance about what sin was doing and manifesting in his life. The Apostle Paul, who wrote more than half of the New Testament. The Apostle Paul, who gave us a practical theological treatise and established sound doctrine on ecclesiology, soteriology, pneumatology, and eschatology, but he couldn't understand his own meology. <laughs> and before you rush to judgment on him, can you tell us why you do what you do? Come on, ask the person beside you, why do you do? what you do go ahead I mean the stuff you know is bad for your health the stuff you know is bad for your heart the stuff you know is bad for your home and yet you keep doing it you keep taking risks and you keep asking God every day to forgive you for stuff you know you ain't ready to stop yet it's so tight in here. I hear what y'all saying. Y'all saying to me, Dante, preach something else. I wish I could because this hurts me too. I went through three messages and God woke me up and said, nah, brother, this the one. And nevertheless, I think what is helpful here is that we learn how to embrace our own humility, fragility, and capability to fool around, to fail, and to fall. Stop fooling yourself thinking that you're fooling everybody else. Help me preach. Look at the person beside you and tell them one thing I know about you is you ain't all of that. <laughs> and neither am I. We are all here because we are kept by the grace of God. You ain't got to make me shout on that. I'll shout all by myself because it could have killed me for what I did last year, last month, last week, last night. But he kept me. Paul said, Dante, sin had stripped me of my self-comprehension. And if that wasn't enough, it stripped me of my self-care. Verse 16 and 17, if then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it's good. But now it's no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Simply put, for many Judeo-Christians during that time, the Mosaic law and moral codes that they lived by were helpful in putting sin in its proper perspective. In that sin is not just good, it is not good for us and it doesn't care about us and it actually hurts us. And sometimes, my dear brothers and sisters, it can be difficult to differentiate between what is sinful from what is simply a human pleasure. And if you ask some very religious people, anything that feels good to you is a sin against God. For them, going to a rated R movie is a sin. For them, playing a game of spades or pinochle is a sin. For them, having a glass or two of what or three of wine is a sin and you you're going to hell and if you ask some progressive christians ain't no sin no more everything goes and we're already in hell but jesus told us to love the lord our god with all our heart mind and soul and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves subsequently to love is to do no harm to god yourself or other people translation love 
loving God won't let you disregard your worship, disconnect your fellowship, devalue your discipleship, and discount your stewardship. Loving yourself won't let you settle for mediocrity, misery, meaninglessness, and messiness. And loving others won't let you be comfortable with being prejudiced, punitive, pitiless, petulant, and petty. Because 1 Corinthians 13 says love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. It doesn't behave rudely. It doesn't seek its own. It's not provoked. It thinks no evil. Doesn't rejoice in iniquity. It rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. Love never fails. Ultimately my dear brothers and sisters we are called to strive after those things that enable life, health and strength and not death, destruction and disease. Paul said Dante, sin felt good to me but I know it wasn't good for me because it was stripping me of my self comprehension. It was stripping me of my ability to care for myself and then it was stripping me of my my self-control that that's what verse 18 says for I know that in me that's in my flesh nothing good dwells for to will is present with me but how to perform what is good I do not find for the good I will to do I don't do but the evil I don't want to do that's what I do now if I do what I will not to do it's no longer I who do it but sin that dwells in me Paul is saying I'm out of control and I'm under the control of my flesh and the problem with most of us is that we think we have control not realizing that we're being controlled by our feelings, our flaws, and our fantasies that have us headed towards fatality. I'm looking at some folk right now and you're falling from the 50th floor, passing by the 20th floor, still saying you are right. And the truth of the matter is we are losing or have lost control and somebody has to admit before you crash and burn, I'm out of control. Because the flesh, the flesh will make you think you're in control while it manifests over time your obesity. It will make you think you're in control, but over time it will manifest high blood pressure. It will make you think you're in control, but over time it will manifest liver damage. It will manifest divorce. It will manifest dysfunctional children. It will manifest a carnal church, and it will manifest your long process and progress to nowhere. But the good news is you can get in control once you realize you're not in control. Stop getting up every day acting like you got it all together. Stop walking around acting like you the cat's me and the cows move. Stop dressing up every Sunday. Act like you holier than everybody else. And look yourself in the mirror before you put them eyebrows, them eyelashes, that wig, that lace front, that toupee on and say, this is who I am and I can't make it without the help of the Lord. Subsequently, Paul says, and I'm about to get out your way after Easter. I know you ain't want no message like this, but the Bible says, Romans 7 and 21, I find in a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. I love the word of God. I love the worship of God. I love the presence of God. I want to be like Jesus. I really want to be like God in my heart. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. And it keeps bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Oh wretched man that I am who will deliver me from this body of death. What Paul discovers and discloses in this text is the duality and dichotomy of his personality, his spirituality, and his reality. He concludes that there are at least two me's inside of me. 
There's a me that wants to do right, but there's a me that keeps doing wrong. There's a me that wants to do good, but there's a me that keeps doing bad. There's a me that wants to strive after holiness, but then there's a me that dwells in wickedness. I'm in a war within myself while trying to be my better self that God has called me to be. And to make matters worse, I have a public grace, but I'm a private disgrace. Somebody help me preach. I look good in front of people, but not so good when I'm all by myself. Michael Jackson had that thing right when he said, I'm looking at the man in the mirror, and I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer if you want to make the world a better place. Stop looking at everybody else. Take a look at yourself and make that change. And please, please don't judge me because I don't want to be this way. Look at somebody and tell them I don't want to be this way. Now, alcoholics don't want to be alcoholics. Drug addicts don't want to be drug addicts. Prisoners don't want to be prisoners. Criminals don't want to be criminals. But I can't help that I'm this way. I'm not the only one this way. All of us are this way. I don't care if your name is Bishop, Dr. Pope, Archbishop, Cardinal, Deacon, Trustee, President, been in St. Paul's for all of your life all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and I got good news for you all are still sinning and coming short of the goodness and the glory of God nevertheless the grace of God thank you Jesus will give you a breakthrough revelation before you have a breakdown situation I'm gonna say that again that sounded good coming out my mouth I said God will give you a breakthrough revelation before you have a breakdown situation Paul said, oh wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? In that moment, he recognized who he was apart from who he could be. And he realized that deliverance was still possible. I need a hundred folk to shout deliverance is still possible. If you made it this far with your bad, bipolar, crazy, and sinful self, then you need to jump up and shout, Thank God deliverance is still possible. God could have wiped me out. God could have killed me a long time ago, but he let me live to give me another opportunity. He let me live to give me another chance. And I need some another chance people in the house to give God and another chance praise. Give God and another chance shout. Give God and another chance hallelujah. He didn't have to let me live, but I'm so glad that he did. And when I read this text I almost got depressed but then I got inspired to know that God has given me grace to overcome the other side of me somebody help me preach and fist bump your neighbor and say neighbor there's help for you you don't have to die and be defeated by your flesh but you can overcome and live in the joy of the Holy Ghost. Paul said it. He said, Dante, I found out that I can overcome the other side of me by confronting the facts about me. Somebody help me preach and shout, I got to confront myself. That's point number one. Point number one is in verse 21. He says, I find in a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. What, what I love about Paul, St. Paul's, is he's very contemplative about himself and his experiences within himself. He wasn't afraid of himself. And he wasn't afraid of having meaningful conversations with himself about what he was dealing with and what he was going through. And sometimes you might look crazy, but you got to talk to yourself. 
So sometime you got to talk to yourself to discover and uncover the real issues within yourself. You see, I found out that's what prayer will do. See, the Holy Ghost is already making intercession on the inside with groanings that, that you can't even utter or understand. God already knows what you need before you even ask him for what you want. But when God tells you to pray, he's telling you to talk to him and talk to yourself and talk to yourself until you discover what's really going on on the inside because I found out something church that we are not doing wrong things for the sake of doing wrong things no there are triggers to our trauma and there are triggers to our drama and maybe we're doing the wrong things like overeating excessive drinking sexual promiscuity overly indulgent gambling drug abuse stealing lying and overspending to compensate for our stress our depression our anxiety our disappointment our rejection our unresolved traumatic childhood our poverty or our shame all I'm trying to tell us to do is find out what your issue is and address it before it kills you with behaviors that if you be honest don't even satisfy you I mean when is the last time you did something you ain't had no business doing with somebody you ain't had no business doing it with and when you were done in your mind you said that wasn't even nothing why am I messing myself up and if you would be honest about your sins they only distract you from the pain but they don't deliver you from the problem and now you're still hurting and getting heavier and now you're still stressing and getting sicker and now you're still broken and getting further and further away from God but this year I made up my mind that I ain't judging nobody I ain't criticizing nobody I ain't condemning nobody before I deal with my own mess it's not my mother nor my father it's not my sister nor my brother but it's me oh Lord I'm standing in the need of prayer and Paul says uh, that if I'm going to overcome the other side of me I've got to be willing to confront myself but then secondly I've got to change how I fight I need you to look down your row and tell them change how you fight that's what he says in verse 23 he says I see another law in my members that's war against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members but then in verse 25 he says so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God but with the flesh the law of sin so then Paul understood that you can't beat the flesh with the flesh somebody here Help me preach he impressed upon his hearers that you got to fight from the strength of the Spirit of God which means you got to feed your spirit in order to fight from your spirit that means in this season you got to pray more you got to study more you got to worship more you got to give more and you got to serve more you can't wait to come to church on Sunday to battle against the devil on Monday but every day you got to practice the spiritual disciplines to manifest your best self in other words this is how I fight my battles I pray without ceasing I need somebody in the house to shout this is how I fight my battles I study the word of God because man can't live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God this is how I fight my battles I confess my sins knowing that God is faithful and he's just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness so 
when Sunday comes, when Monday comes, when Tuesday comes, when Wednesday comes, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth and the more I maintain my spiritual health, the more I will manifest the fruit of the spirit that overcomes the works of the flesh. Can I preach like I feel it? The fruit of love will overcome the spirit of selfishness. The fruit of joy will overcome the spirit of heaviness. The fruit of peace will overcome confusion. Long suffering will overcome anxiety. Temperance will overcome self-destruction. Have I got a witness? Goodness will overcome toxicity. Gentleness will overcome insensitivity. Meekness will overcome arrogance. And faithfulness will overcome faithlessness. Can I preach like I feel it? Shake somebody's hand. Say, neighbor, I almost gave up. I almost threw in the towel. I almost quit on God and quit on myself. But I'm so glad to report because he got up. I can get up after he got up. Can I preach? Tell your neighbor, this is how you overcome yourself. Confront yourself. Change how you fight. But finally, celebrate your favor. Y'all ain't shouting. We about to shut this church down. Look at your neighbor. Tell him I'm blessed. And I know I'm blessed. Don't dot every I. Don't cross every T. Messed up every day. But I thank God through Jesus Christ, my Lord, he will give me another, another chance. Paul answers his own question and gives us the solution to our sin problem. He says we've overcome by the blood of Jesus. For Jesus took on our flesh and every sinful impulse and defeated it at the cross of Calvary. That's good news. You've been watching the television broadcast of Southern Baptist Church, where Dr. Dante L. Hickman Sr. is the pastor. If you desire to purchase a copy of this week's broadcast or any of our other media treasures, please call our media ministry at 410-732-8566. Thank you, Bishop Hickman, and thank you for joining us on this Memorial Day Sunday. Listen, I hope that you and your family have enjoyed the weekend thus far and will enjoy Memorial Day. Remember, uh, that does it for us today because we have a station commitment that's going to be honored. So we'll be back with our normal time slot and allotment next week. Suffice to say, until then, continue to walk in His grace and live in His glory, and we look forward to connecting with you right here on Grace and Glory next week.